the ground floor was all occupied with uh, shops. There were tenants in the shops. These shops were looted, vandalized, and their property got burned. And these were indeed our tenants. Having said that, Madam Chair, our agreements with them were really for tenancy, and the uh, government of Uganda did not have any liability to that extent. And we hold a view that uh, indeed, if they individually have insurance, that will take care of that. But uh, uh, their hope is that the structure is renovated and they pick up the pieces and go back to business. But for now, it's uncertain. Okay, you can proceed with other questions that you had. Not make copies for all the members, but this document, uh, the Honorable Komakech was concerned that we are not given enough detail. But Madam Chair, I want to say that this particular document has quite some detail, only that we received it yesterday and we could not run copies. Because when the request, the directive to appear before the committee came to us, indeed we wrote to the missions to provide information. And this information came late, and that's why we're only laying it on, on, on table uh, for the committee. you have a contract the committee. document there? Contract document? The contract document. We didn't have the contract document here, but we can get it, Madam Chair. We, we need a have... contract document. Mm. Certificate of completion at completion levels. Is it there, attached? No, it's not attached. Uh, Madam Chair, we restricted ourselves to what you had requested. But uh, we can avail those documents uh, this afternoon. Okay. after this meeting. Okay, we need a complete certificate at the completion levels. We need a contract document. We need also the policy, the in insurance, insurance policy. policy. Then we need a copy of that letter of regret. And a press release, press release a statement press release? that went to the press. This is a signed one. This is what I signed. Honorable colleagues, the minister has gone out just to use on the phone. So you'll be coming back in. He asked for permission. It was a very important phone call from Parliament. But as well, Chair, we can still be interrogating the PAs. Yes, have you exhausted your questions? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, Madam Chair, the, the PS is a humble, is a humble speaking person. <laughs> I've been wondering, PS, now, I don't know whether you could answer he, this. I'm wondering the of any security <laughs> measures that have been taken. Because for now, to avoid such reoccurrence in the future. Uh, the, the other thing, Chair, we need to learn. Uh, 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 when you talk about steps of rehabilitating the same facility and to avoid double expenditure, whether by insurance or on part of government of Uganda, how certain can can, can had a fire or caught a fire? Uh, Chair, I also pray that you caution the minister. He may disappear any time. Uh, he's he's not. He's normally he's normally not easy. However, uh, when it comes to the to, to the to the status quo in Kenya, yes, there was a fire. The cause is still being investigated. By the time you you lay a statement talking about rehabilitation, repair, or insurance, has the situation normalized? Is it now safe even to talk about to invest again? Utilizing our insurance cover? Is it a time for us to utilize, if, if a report comes out today, is it ripe that we can now revise the mechanisms of re, re, rehabilitating it? Or we are going to build it again in one week? It is burnt the other week. Our relations is safe for now. So what is within your knowledge as, as a ministry? Yes, can you respond to that? <clears throat> Madam Chair, the Honorable 
Minister of Foreign Affairs, Shadow, raises. It's also important that whereas the minister makes reference to the... It was the staff, and I was saying, no, they based on a report by a competent professional body. Uh, indeed, you have also raised other questions, and I would like uh, to request the permanent secretary to quickly respond to these questions on the rate of completion, the availability of a certificate of completion. Honorable Minister, before you go to the certificate of completions, at and PS, the preliminary can findings. the PS do that, particularly on that area? We need to conclude that matter. Clarification over the same? Um, Honorable Chair, as the Minister has stated, um, our Chancery is in Riverside. That is where it has been. It is true that before the renovations started, a section of consular services was in Uganda House. But that does not make Uganda House a diplomatic entity, because it's not a chancery. A chancery is designated as a chancery and uh, it enjoys immunity. If Uganda House defaulted on power or water, it would be sued. Unlike or any other thing, uh, or it's not invaluable, as uh, the lawyers would say. So, Madam Chair, it is true, before the renovations, yes, we had a consular section that sat at uh, Uganda House. But the Chancery has always been and will continue to be at uh, Riverside. Then after the renovation? After, indeed, uh, Madam Chair, uh, during this course of the renovations, a consular section was also uh, renovated at the Chancery in, uh, uh, in Riverside and the consular section. But having said that, we shall hear, I want to put a disclaimer from... By the time uh, of the fire, was the consular services on the second floor still at the no, Madam, House? No, Madam Chair. It was not. Are you sure about that, P.S.? Yes, I can go on record that it was not. Because, as the minister stated, only the ground floor, which had shops, mm -hmm. was operational okay. in the entire building. The rest okay. was under renovation. Madam Chair, we shall provide uh, the certificates uh, to demonstrate how far the construction had gone and indeed the associated payments. Madam Chair, let me state this. When uh, the invitation was given. Were issued already? How many certificates I had think, already been issued and the stages of completion? I think in excess of um, five or seven certificates. But Madam Chair, we shall provide the information. That information we had about the ministry, we can provide it even today after this meeting. Madam Chair, allow me to say that uh, the mission, our uh, High Commission in Nairobi, Uganda High Commission in Nairobi, contracted MS Ambitious Construction Limited to construct or to renovate the Chancery. They also contracted Wanjohi Motoi Consult Limited as the supervision consultant for this property. And uh, indeed, uh, government of Uganda disbursed, I beg your pardon, I had mentioned the figure of 22, but it was 27 billion for the refurbishment of Uganda House under the works and consultancy uh, at the time of uh, the fire was at around 26.3 billion. That is where uh, the, uh, uh, the stage at which we were. They had spent 26.3 billion. So, Madam Chair, when the fire happened, indeed, uh, our staff, the security staff attached to Nairobi, to our Nairobi mission, 
collaborated with Kenya police to get the, the fire brigade to come and put out the fire. But Chair, I want us to reflect on the events of that particular day because they were in the public domain. On that very day, there was a procession or protest in the Parliament of Kenya. It was on television, covered live. What happened on that particular day was seen by everybody who watched the news at the time. There were incidences at the city hall in Nairobi. And then there was an incident that we took interest in, which was the Uganda House. Chances are high, there are other many incidences that took place on that particular day, but they, are not of, they have not been of interest to us as Uganda. But indeed, Uganda House caught a fire, and indeed there are clips, Madam Chair, which we can play, if given an opportunity, to show what exactly transpired. And indeed, there were many people that was, were gathered around Uganda House. So the conclusion that uh, it was a result of the protests of the day, which protests were in broad daylight, is not very far from the truth, in our opinion. So when the fire... Uh, uh, just just on, that, on that point, and also to demystify uh, the... Chair, the ministry issued a statement uh, I think around the 26th or 27th, thereabout, we issued that statement after having discussions, one with the High Commission, our High Commission, the people on the ground, and after engaging colleagues in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Kenya. And the sentiments in the discussions that we had were that the building caught a fire as a result of the protests on the 25th. That is the import of what we said. That statement was issued. We made the same statement uh, when the fire caught. And indeed, after our statatement, by way of validation of what we had said, what uh, we had uh, stated. Yes, I think, the, do you have a copy of that statement with you? I think it's important that you share it with the committee. Uh, no, no, it may not uh, and Chair, as the PS corrects his... To give, we give time for the technical team, the PS and his team, to conclude with the insurance and maybe give us a comprehensive feedback. So we will not have any discussion on the proposal for the $6 billion for now. However, PS are still on that. I was wondering about the tenants who were in the building. <coughs> were their properties also destroyed? If I told their properties were destroyed, what is the responsibility? Whose responsibility is it to compensate them for the damages caused? 